Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Jenny and this is Arnold the Praying Penguin and we create videos every Saturday about prayer, about exploring the Bible and about living out your faith. And today we're going to be talking about idols. Now when we say the word idols and idol worship and idolatry, you probably think about stories in the Old Testament where people made great statues and golden calves and built these towers and things and then worshipped them instead of God. And that's one example of what idolatry can look like, but in today's video we want to talk about what idolatry looks like today. And in particular, five different things that we still often worship today. And then in our next video we're going to be sharing all about how we can recognise idols in our own life and also how to avoid idols today. So make sure you're subscribed to see that video when it comes out. So first of all, what are idols? And different people have different definitions about what an idol is, but basically it's anything that we place above God, anything that we start to almost worship, places more important than God, we prioritise over God. So why are idols bad? Why is this a bad thing to do? Well firstly, God commands us not to have idols. In the Ten Commandments, one of the commandments is not to have idols, not to worship idols. So it's clearly something that's very important and has been very important for a long time. This isn't a new thing that has kind of come about in modern society. This has been something that has impacted people for a long time. But idols are bad because they prevent us from drawing closer to God because we're seeking after something else. If we're focusing so much on something else, then how can we have time and energy and focus to be seeking after God in the way that we should be? They also distract us from God's calling on our life, from the things that he is telling us to do, the places that he's leading us to. And idols are also bad because we can begin to turn to those idols for things that only God can provide for us. We turn to those things for peace, for comfort, for love, and even for our salvation. And those are things that we should be turning to God for. So we want to talk about five different idols that we still worship today that are quite common in today's society. Now this isn't an exhaustive list, absolutely anything can become an idol if we prioritise it above God. But these are five that I think are quite common that you probably can recognise in today's society and that maybe some of us accidentally slip into idolising by accident. So the first of these is ourselves as individuals. Today's culture is very focused on ourselves, on what makes us feel good, on living our truth, on discovering who we are and living our best lives, all of those kind of things. And as a society we're also very focused on our identities, discovering who we are and putting labels on that, whether that's to do with our job and our job status, whether it's about groups that we're part of or achievements that we've had in our lives that we think give us some kind of status. And this can also include things like sexual orientation and gender identity and other things that we want to put a label on and we think those labels hold great importance for who we are. But we can easily become more focused on who we are than on who God is. We spend more time trying to work out who we are, discover who we are, and place our needs and our wants and our desires above those of God. Especially when we start to think that our truth is more important or better in some way than God's truth when we start to think that our feelings, our opinions, our wants and desires are more important than God. I think this is a really easy idol to kind of fall into because society does talk so much about discovering who you are and doing what's best for you and placing yourself above other people, even though that is very contradictory to what the Bible tells us. The second idol that I think is worshipped a lot today is politics. And I believe that Christians can and often should be involved in politics, should be having their say and working to impact the world and improve the world for other people, which we often can do through policies. Everyone in the world has a worldview and that always impacts their politics because politics is about the policies that we want to see and that is impacted by how we think the world should look and how people should be treated. And that's the same for Christians, Muslims, Buddhists and atheists and everyone in between. Our faith should guide and shape our politics but this can often end up happening in reverse with people picking a political standpoint and then just twisting scripture and making scripture fit whatever it is they already want to believe, a decision that they've already made. And this is placing politics above God because it's saying that our political standpoint, what we've already decided is more important than what the Bible teaches us. 
if we're going to place God above politics, as we should, we need to go to the Bible first and let that shape and design our politics. Again, I do think this is a quite an easy idol to fall into worshipping because politics can be so loud and kind of demand that you make a decision quickly. Whereas often we need time to explore the Bible and to fully understand God's will in a certain situation. And our faith doesn't necessarily fit neatly into one box, one political party. It might be that our faith points us to views on both sides of the political aisle, and that's okay. The third idol that we want to talk about is celebrities and influencers. And I think nowadays this is probably more influencers than it is kind of the traditional celebrities, movie stars and pop stars and stuff. Because I think because of social media, we feel like we have a much closer relationship with influencers that we follow on social media, for example. It kind of feels like a friendship, it feels like a two-way thing, much more than a celebrity who seems so much further out of reach. But when we're following an influencer or reading about what a celebrity has done, we can often give these people a lot of power. Power to influence us, power to influence our opinions and the things we buy and the things we do but if we let them influence us more than God influences us we are placing them in a higher position than God. We're placing their teachings as more important than God's teachings. I think this can even happen with Christian influencers not because that person intends for it to happen but because if we're turning to them for wisdom, for truth, for comfort and help instead of going straight to God we're kind of worshipping a god through the lens of this influencer and we end up seeking after them much more than we're actually seeking after god himself. We care about their interpretation of scripture more than scripture itself. The fourth idol that we can often fall into the trap of worshipping is society. The people around us, friends and family and the much wider society. And I think this is a much more common idol today because we have so much access to society, to the wider society, through social media again. We have endless access now to other people's opinions, other people's views, other people's thoughts about us. And if we express a view that society disapproves of, and we feel the full force of that disapproval through messages and comments and everything like that, it can be hard to stand up against that. We want society to like us. We want to feel included and like we're part of society. We want to often agree with the people around us because that's a lot easier than having that disapproval. But which is more important to us, society's approval or God's approval? If we're placing society's approval over God, this can often come at the expense of truth. We'll often stay quiet about situations that actually we should be speaking up about just so that we don't upset society. And the fifth and final idol that we wanted to talk about today is the future. And this might sound a little bit weird, but how often do you find yourself or other people constantly seeking after the next thing, the next promotion, the next new job, the next step that they see should be happening in their lives? And this can be about getting more money, more status, more power. It could be a bigger house, a nicer car. It could be things like getting a new relationship, getting engaged, getting married, and then having kids. We can be so focused on seeking after what's next and kind of chasing down that next thing that we want, that we're not focusing on God's calling for us right now and the things that he has for us right now. Rather than simply striving and chasing after what's next, we should be chasing after God. But those are just five idols that I think are quite common today in 2022. As I said, this isn't an exhaustive list and I'm sure you can think of many more different idols that you see people worshipping around you. Let us know down in the comments what other idols you think people do really worship today. And then in next week's video, we're going to be talking about how to identify idols in your life and also how to get rid of those idols or how to avoid idols in the first place. But we hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos just like this, including part two of this video next week. But for now, if you'd like to see other videos about being a Christian in today's world, do check out these videos on screen and we will see you next Saturday for a new video. Bye!